Hello, everybody. It is a pleasure to be here. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Mondol for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. I'm a cardiologist and a cardiac electrophysiologist based in Memphis in the U.S. and also a professor uh, at the University of Memphis. So today I'm going to talk to you about the cardiac risk factors and um, how yoga helps prevent or helps uh, to cure as part of complementary and alternative medicine when used along with modern medicine to cure a large number of heart disease. Now, why heart disease? Not that because I am a cardiologist, but the reason is heart disease is the biggest killer in the Western Hemisphere as well as turned out to be a biggest killer in India too. Even in developing countries, slowly infective diseases are slowly being replaced by non-communicable disease like heart disease and heart disease has become the largest killer. In countries like India, as well as in most countries in the West, heart disease kills more people than many other types of disease combined. Almost twice the number of people die because of heart disease than those that die because of cancer. So what are the risk factors for heart disease and how does yoga help controlling them? Some of the most important risk factors for um, heart disease are hypertension, diabetes mellitus, psychological stress, dyslipidemia or hyperlipidemia, obesity, and least, not the least, last but not the least, is smoking. Now, hypertension is responsible for over 7 to 8 million deaths worldwide. It is a huge problem, a large burden. Multiple randomized control trial has shown that meditation plays a good role in bringing down both pre and mild to moderate hypertension. I was one of the cardiologists who wrote down the guidelines for the American Heart Association, the world's largest body for cardiologists, cardiovascular surgeons, and researchers in cardiovascular medicine. In that, we clearly stated that mild to moderate hypertension is actually uh, helped by doing meditation. And as you know, yoga, a large part of yoga is actually meditation. Though the results are modest, but that can be helpful because remember, some of the RCTs has shown that as much as five millimeter of mercury of systolic blood pressure to 10 millimeter of mercury of systolic blood pressure and between three to five millimeter mercury of diastolic blood pressure can be decreased by the practice of yoga alone with dietary changes like decreased salt. Now you might think that is not big, but that's not true. The reason is the numbers might look small, but just five millimeter mercury of decrease in blood pressure can result in three to 5% decrease in coronary artery disease or cardiovascular disease. So a disease which has millions of sufferer all over the world with millions of death, 5% is a huge number. There has been many RCTs including using things like transcendental meditation, yoga, different types of yoga, and they have consistently shown that blood pressure has a modest role in decreasing hypertension, preventing cardiovascular death. Now let's go to the second biggest uh, problem that is diabetes. India, as you know, is a country where diabetes is almost epidemic. Huge millions of people have diabetes and they are being diagnosed every day on a daily basis. A couple of years back in 2017, it has been estimated around 1.37 million people worldwide died because of diabetes. Three years after that today, I, we don't have the exact number, but I can guarantee you it will be much bigger. So there are good medicines for diabetes. But yoga plays a dominant role along with medicine. There is no medicine which does not have a side effect. 
Some medicine are even dangerous for the heart. They may improve your diabetes, but are dangerous for the heart. And that's the reason why the drug authorities in the U.S. now only allow those drugs in the market that has been proven to show that they have no cardiovascular effect or they have favorable cardiovascular effect. Because you don't want to prevent diabetes but kill a person by giving a drug that causes other problems and kills a person. Yoga is one of those modalities that has been shown to be very powerful in prevention and treatment of diabetes. In a recent trial of over 4,000 patients, newly diagnosed diabetic can have normal A1C by three months of practice only. That is 47% reduction to normal uh, blood sugar in almost a huge number of population. That is half the number of population in a trial, which has a huge number of people that is around 3,766, that is almost 4,000. Not only that, there have been many randomized control trials that have shown that A1C, hemoglobin A1C can be decreased with practice of appropriate yoga techniques. Now, it's important to understand these are diseases which have millions of sufferers. So when you combine appropriate medicine with change in lifestyle, change in diet, yoga, you can achieve much better result than by drug itself. Plus, when you try only drugs, there may be a need to increase the doses of the drug with passage of time. That can be appropriately ameliorated when you use other methods along with drugs like change in lifestyle, decreasing sugar intake, taking food with low glycemic index, practicing appropriate lifestyle hygiene. So it is important to understand that yoga plays a dominant role in control of diabetes, not only that, but to prevent deaths from cardiovascular disease, the number one killer on earth. Now there are a couple of other uh, factors which are equally important. For example, obesity. Obesity, particularly visceral obesity, is now considered as important a risk factor as diabetes or hypertension. Now, visceral obesity basically causes inflammation of the vascular system. Why do you get in heart attack? You get in heart attack because there's inflammation of the coronary arteries. Why do you get stroke? You get stroke because there is inflammation of the arteries supplying the brain. Why do you get peripheral artery disease? You get peripheral artery disease because there is inflammation of the artery and obstruction of the arteries of your legs. And older people can have angina due to uh, inflammation of the arteries in their stomach, in their intestine, in the gut. So the whole story of cardiovascular disease rotates around inflammation. And obesity, particularly visceral obesity, is a potent cause of inflammation. Again, multiple yoga therapy has shown through multiple randomized controlled trial that it helps to reduce weight. It helps to prevent obesity also. And remember, certain drugs, for example, if you take insulin for diabetes, you're liable to increase weight. But combining yoga practice might prevent that. So while you get the beneficial effect of insulin, you can prevent the side effect that is gain of weight, which itself is lethal. The other important thing that in the last 10 to 15 years has come to take a very important place uh, for causing coronary artery disease, sudden heart attack, stroke and death is what is known as psychological stress. Psychological stress is not one factor. It is a syndrome of multiple things occurring together. Anxiety, stress, depression. So when all these things go together, you have a syndrome complex that causes severe inflammation in your vascular system, causing heart attacks and deaths from that. Just like obesity, this is a potent cause of inflammation. 
and today thanks to our living style we get psychological stress from almost everything in life our job problems in our family our very existence in this earth with things like covid pandemic you cannot avoid those but certainly you can avoid the adverse effects of psychological stress by practicing yoga and meditation as all of you know yoga is only 2 to 3% maybe 5% of asanas or postures it's 95% meditation and meditation technique has shown to cause even genetic changes that prevent you from getting stressed out and stress can be lethal there is what is known as toxic stress where the acute cause of stress goes away but you still continue to be stressed and because you continue to be stressed the body releases dangerous hormones body releases complex toxic neurohormones that causes damages in the brain damages in your heart damages in your vascular system leading to increased cause of death through heart attack stroke heart failure name it almost everything and now we know practice of meditation can help prevent all of those not only prevent it but actually make permanent changes in your genes so that you're less liable to get stressed out cause what is known as neuroplasticity that is change the neuronal circuits inside your brain so that you're less likely to get stressed out so while you cannot avoid stress if you live on earth and a normal life but you can certainly avoid or completely eliminate the bad or the adverse effects of stress last but not the least among the important uh, adverse effects is from two important things one is hyperlipidemia or dyslipidemia and the last but not the least is smoking hyperlipidemia is a dangerous thing you have few millions of people dying every year because of hyperlipidemia again hyperlipidemia can be decreased to a large extent by practice of asanas or different postures different uh, meditation techniques also help in decreasing the stress and inflammation that hyperlipidemia causes a large number of rct has shown that the different type of lipids in your body for example ldl is reduced practice of exercise like light yoga asanas changes in lifestyle doing simple physical cardiovascular exercise like swimming dancing running cycling can in actually decrease your ldl and prevent you from getting another heart attack or prevent your very first heart attack or make sure that you never ever get a heart attack or a stroke so it's very important to understand the very important effects that yoga causes by decreasing all these dangerous factors last but not the least is smoking smoking is one of the most lethal addiction ever known to mankind starting from lung cancer to bladder cancer to heart attack to stroke it can cause everything close your eyes and name three or four worst killers on earth and unfortunately smoking is involved in all of them so again there's been trial that showed that meditation practice of asanas can decrease craving for smoking so my friend i'd like to stop now the time is up almost every cause every risk factors for coronary artery disease the largest killer in this universe is prevented by the practice of yoga you being yoga students yoga practitioners yoga teachers people who teach about yoga meditation scientists it is important to understand and get it out to the lay people and including the lay people who may be hearing my video that you can prevent a lot of the disease burden by regular practice of yoga which includes 
physical exercises that is called asanas in Sanskrit and meditation. Thank you very much.